with me as we journey through a student's facial electrical assessment. that the um, treatment would give but perhaps I think you struggled with a descriptive word to use yeah. and so then the ones that you were trying to use possibly weren't the right ones. What you could either do is turn the machine on and let the client hear the sound um, and almost I think the sound of the machine is what it feels like. Yeah. It's like you can't really describe the feeling. Um, asking a little bit about skin, how her skin is, um, yeah just if you could make that what your aftercare was, your aftercare was spot on. Um, but you had lovely client care, um, so you did wrap her up. Um, I liked the rapport that you built with her. You talked to her about her nails, and yeah, that was really lovely. You prepared her skin really effectively, so a good cleanse and exfoliation, and then you brought on the high frequency um, really well. Yes, it did take a while to warm up, and I think when it, that doesn't happen instantly, it can panic you, but actually it worked, and you worked on all the areas really nicely. I just prompted you to say, how does that feel? Yeah. So just, again, think about it in that that might feel a bit strange. It's a new sensation to her. Yeah. Um, so checking the client's well-being is really important. Lovely facial massage after the high frequency had taken place. The client looked like she relaxed really well at that point. Good timing of your treatment, which is something that you need to be aware of, but that was really good. And finish to the skin was lovely as well. And you gave very thorough aftercare advice, well done. That part you've nailed. The treatment part you've nailed, now it's just that consultation. Yeah. And I think the problem is when you first face with a client, you've never met them, yeah. it's a bit nerve wracking. Oh, it's like brush into it. Yeah, and then you just think, oh, I don't really know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, like when I said to you when you're washing your brushes and your sponges, right, really think about your aftercare advice now. Do that at the start before yeah. your treatment. Because that can make, if the client feels comfortable after the consultation, as soon as they get on the couch, the results yeah. are going to speak for themselves. But well done, it was a good a good thorough treatment. So it was competent with no supervision required. I've just said to continue working on providing an in-depth consultation, especially for an electrical treatment, and then you'll just prepare for further assessments now in your next machine yes. product. So if you're happy if you can sign there for me. Oh, sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Um, Jane would like a glass of water, so do I go downstairs? No, in the bathroom, there's a jug and some little glasses on the side. You can do that. A jug? Yeah, there's a jug in the bathroom. What would have been water? Mm -hmm. So it's Wednesday, I am in my lunch break and I'm now parked outside the physio. Um, so I made an appointment after Sunday. I contacted, we know I know a physio guy quite well because he worked at Burley for a little while during the lockdowns when he couldn't work from the gym that he was working from. So it's somebody that I know quite well, been treated for, by him before and really trust him. So I emailed him on Sunday just to ask about this plantar fasciitis, if that's what he thinks it is and if there's anything that he can do to cure it. And so he has recommended for me to come and see him. So I'm 
I'm here just waiting for my appointment. I'm going to try, try and take you in with me. Um, I haven't asked him yet if it's okay to film, but I'll ask him and see. Anyway, he's a great guy called Pete, Peter Corder um, from P and SI um, Sports Massage and Physio based in Hampton. Um, really great guy, definitely trust him. Um, and so hopefully in this one session alone, he's going to cure me. We'll soon find out. Real bad pain in the heel. Right. Um, didn't really think anything of it, sort of theragunned it and massaged it a bit. Um, and then like the next day it wouldn't be great. But then I'd go for another run and it would ease off as I ran. So I never really thought it was any particular injury because every time I ran, it sort of felt better. But the day after running would be sore. So I've been doing all the things they've told me. So I've been using a spiky ball, rolling my foot, I've been icing it, I've been rolling my calves, I've been stretching. Um, and I haven't run for two weeks. Is there any other time you become aware of it? What's I'm... it like first thing in the morning? Yeah, so that's probably the most painful. So if you've been sat in a chair at work and you get up... Uh, you that's probably when I'll be right. most aware of it, yeah. How would you describe the pain? It's all in the soul, it's all in the heel. So is it quite sharp, stabby, throbby, achy? How would you describe yeah, it? So Achy is probably quite a good word. And when I when it's bad and I grip it at the sides here, it's that it feels almost bruised, right. I guess. Yeah. Okay. yeah. How many out of 10 is the pain at its lowest level? Is it zero? So yeah, yeah. It, so today it's actually not been too bad. And even this morning, as I got up out of bed, I was like, oh. It's easier. Yeah. Okay. How but many I, out of 10 is the pain at its highest level at this stage then? At this stage, not oh. so bad, because I think I've been doing stuff so like, Three, four. Okay, so it's minimal. No numbness, pins and needles into no. the foot? No. Is there anything you've done recently that's different? <laughs> Have you increased your mileage, changed footwear? Okay, so I haven't changed footwear, haven't increased mileage, but uh, probably in a couple of weeks leading up to it, I did do some intense interval training and heel reps, which I have since read can contribute yeah. to it. I also have been gymming quite hard because I'm training to become a personal trainer at the moment. Yeah. And so I have been in the gym much more frequently. It's sounding like plantar fasciitis. And if you've done, uh, it tends to be generated or started from tight calf tissue. Yeah. Uh, which seems to be the catalyst for this. So I would, how old are your shoes? Uh, not a year. They're probably coming. They've probably got about three hundred and fifty miles in them, so they're probably not far right. off. Right. Okay. Okay. Just, just it might be worth just checking to see how the midsole is. But uh, yeah, hill running, um, lots of calf work. Uh, yeah, it tends to trigger this. Yeah. Prior to this, you would have a little more, a little bit more hill work. Yeah. Always look for the obvious. Yeah. So you're probably looking at that as the start of this, and it's just led to tight calves. And then it's affected the fascia tissue underneath. Yeah. So I would suggest that's probably what's going on. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll assess it, just yeah. check it, make sure there's no ankle problems there. Because it felt better when I ran, I thought, oh, well, it can't be anything bad because it feels better. But then I've now read that that's yeah, often the case happens, with plantar yeah. fasciitis. So what, what's happening here is that with feeling 80% improved, yes, you could put that down just a period of rest, but also the fact you've done your research. You're stretching your calves, yeah. you're doing your phone running, I've done everything. you're doing your spike ball and so on. But all of the above has probably helped to get you to this point. Yeah. The fact you're getting up in the morning is a lot easier in the morning than yeah. it was previously. Again, big tick, that showed it's going yeah. in the right direction. I'll do exactly what you tell me to do. Listen, <laughs> you're doing everything I want to talk about. Okay. You, what you might need is some uh, uh, brute force and ignorance from uh, a physiotherapist just to release that car yeah. and the fascia tissue to see if that will help. Yeah. Okay. Did you notice any swelling? No. Or, right. Nothing Pull like that. Pull your feet up towards you. Point your toes towards me. No problems there. No. Okay. And relax. Turn your feet inwards. So roll, roll them in like that. Oh, like That's that. that. And the other one. Any problem there? No. Okay. Take them out the other way. Any problem there? No. Okay. And relax. Any pain if I do that? No. Okay, any pain if I do that? No. Nothing there? No. Anything there? No. Okay, and how does that feel this side? 
can feel Fighter, the difference. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you've got your calf muscles which attach to the calcana and the heel bone. Yeah. Now if that's tight, in effect what's happening, it's trying to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now if it's trying to do that, and then you've got your fascia tissue under here, and then you put your weight on the f uh, onto your foot, because that's all tight, you're putting extra tension in there. Yeah. So how long do you think I should keep off from running for? We need to get you to the point where you're getting up in the morning and not getting pain. Oh yeah. And once we get to that point yeah. and you're just walking around without thinking about it, yeah. you need to start talking about getting you running again. Yeah. So just finished physio. Um, that was quite a painful experience, but it was really good. And Pete is so knowledgeable. He's just put my mind at rest. Um, my calf is excessively tight. So even though I've been rollering it and massaging it and all the things that I should have been doing, um, it was still so tight. So the massage that he did already, I can feel is so much looser. He also massaged, as you could see, into the fascia as well, into my foot, which again, I had been doing. And he said that I've been doing all the right things, which is really good to hear. Um, so it was definitely better because of what I'd been doing but oh my goodness when he worked into that it was so tight and it was really painful so I've got another appointment booked for a week's time um, and he said that as soon as there's no discomfort at all particularly when I get up and out um, first thing in the morning out of bed then I am good to start running and just increasing um, the distance slowly so there's light at the end of the tunnel I didn't need to ugly cry on Sunday all's well that ends well um, and I look forward to seeing the benefits. So it's Saturday, just got home from work, quick shower and change, and we are off on date night. Lola is at a friend's sleepover, there's lots of girls all getting together, um, so she is going to be partying, so we decided that we would do the same. Um, so we are walking to Chiquitos, have a little bit, a bit of Mexican, a couple of margaritas, and then we'll probably be in bed by nine o'clock with a cup of tea. <laughs> So we're just on our way back. We had a really nice meal. The salad that I had was delicious and David had like a pork belly, which isn't on him, he always has a burger. But it was really nice. We've just bought some treats, chocolate raisins and chocolate nuts from the shop. And now we're gonna go home, pour some red wine and watch a film. Um, thank you for watching this week's vlog. I hope you found it interesting. My week of physio, assessing and a date night. Um, click here if you want to see a short of me assessing and click here to subscribe. If you haven't already, please consider doing so and I will look forward to seeing you all next week.